Okay then. So we're live, testing, testing, is this thing on? <clears throat> so, um, I'm going to be talking about the new album, or hopefully you'll be asking questions about the new album actually. I will try to answer them as uh, good as I can. Um, this is the first time I'm doing one of these uh, live things, so if there's any technical issues, you know why. Um, do say if the background music is too loud. I thought it'd be nice to have something in the background, but uh, if it takes away from you hearing what I say... Hi there, Lindsay. Uh, if you don't hear what I say, then there's no point of this, so uh, tell me if it's too loud and I'll turn it down. Okay, so hopefully uh, you'll have some uh, nice questions for me that I can answer. I'd just like to point out straight away that there are things that I can say and there are things that I simply can't answer at this point. Um, and you know, it has to do with the release schedule and all that. Alright, so we got a first question I see. Any ballad on the album? <clears throat> uh, I would say yes. Uh, I would say that there is one song in particular that would uh, definitely count as a ballad, I think. It is track number... Oh, I don't remember... 8, 7 or 8. <clears throat> It's called Love Don't Live Here Anymore. Um, and it's a bit uh, it's a bit different, I think, uh, than the stuff that we've done lately because it's a it's got this major key chorus to it. So it's <clears throat> even if the lyrics are quite melancholic, it's actually uh, you know a happy song, so to speak. So I would say it's a bit like What of Our Love from New Religion, maybe. Uh, in that kind of style. How is the composition process? Uh, well, first of all, I <coughs> I write most of the music on the album, so it's usually me sitting alone with the guitar. Uh, I'm using this old piece of junk, usually. It sounds terrible, it looks terrible, it was from my youthful, artsy face where I uh, decided to paint this uh, old guitar. Uh, it's rarely tuned, but <clears throat> it serves its purpose. And this is what I usually write with, so I start out with, you know, doodling on the guitar, uh, and that's uh, at some point turned into a demo with computer drums. I usually show that demo to the rest of the band, um, and then at some point we decide, you know, if we wanted to record it for real, or uh, if it doesn't cut it, basically. So I actually have a lot of stuff lying about that haven't, you know, haven't become Crazy Lick songs. Um, but that's usually how it goes. Then I, you know, I, sometimes I cooperate with other people as well. And there's actually one song on this album where we have a uh, co-writer who is not a person from the band, which is actually something of a first time for us. So it's an outside uh, co-op uh, along with me uh, on one of the songs. Alright, so let's see if we have something new. See you at Rock of Ages Festival. Thank you for the great music. Cheers from Germany. Yes, we will see you at Rock of Ages Festival, hopefully. Uh, really looking forward to that festival. We got a lot of cool stuff, uh, in, especially in Germany. Uh, you might have seen that we're uh, confirmed for Wacken Festival, which is awesome. I uh, wouldn't have believed it if someone asked me 15 years ago if I thought I'd be playing Wacken. Uh, I always imagined it was quite a, you know, metal festival uh, and that it wouldn't actually fit us, but I'm really happy that we're on the bill and um, looking forward to it. Uh, okay, hi from Japan. I'd like to ask you about your work. Uh, what is the concept of this artwork? Oh, you're referring to the new album cover, I take it. Uh, the concept is um, we're coming out in, you know, a blaze of smoke and, and lights, basically. <laughs> There's not much more to it, to be honest. Um, we just thought it would be cool, uh, you know, we got this mission to make rock great again. We thought that album cover looked very, you know, rock, let's do this. So, not much thought behind it, honestly. 
Um, okay, anything about coming close to Romania again? Uh, yes, we have actually quite a big festival coming up. I can't tell you exactly where it is right now. It's, I would say it's close to Romania by, you know, global standards. Um, it, it's, it's, um, it's close enough for a car drive, I think. That depends on where in Romania you live, of course. But yes, we will come into the vicinity of Romania. And this time will be a, a much bigger uh, place than we were when we played in Romania last time. So, uh, but we won't be able to confirm uh, that until a couple of months into the future. So we'll just have to watch out for some news. All right. Uh, any chance of coming back to the U.S.? Okay, I knew this question would come up, and it might as well. Uh, so the, the the thing about the U.S. Uh, that is the place that we, right now, we have the most streams from the US, we have the most, uh, I would say, CD sales, physical CD sales as well, and merchandise and everything. So naturally, that is our, you know, greatest market. And compared to Europe, especially compared to Sweden, where we have, what, 10 million people, uh, you know, the US is a huge country and it's a, a very big market for us, potentially. The problem with the US is that it's really difficult to get a visa and it's really uh, it's really expensive, uh, first of all. So uh, to make it worthwhile, you really have to uh, be able to make some dough when you when you're there, you know. Uh, but we're looking into it. We're always looking into it. We 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 uh, we were in the U.S. last year. Um, the thing about that festival was that it was in an exclusive show, so we weren't allowed to play anymore when we were there. Um, um, I can be honest with you and say that we don't have anything confirmed and I would see it as highly unlikely that we would go to the US anytime, uh, you know, this summer or fall because we're basically, uh, you know, booking it all up on other stuff right now. But um, we would definitely want to go to the US on this tour at some point. Um, but it's, as I say, it's not about us not wanting to go to the US or, you know, ignoring the fans from there because uh, that is not the case. It's just a, a difficult situation, you know, uh, economically and all the paperwork that has to be done. Uh, it's, it's way more difficult than just going to a European country uh, like we usually do. All right. Uh, what type of weed did you smoke before doing this live session? I'm actually just drinking this and I know what you're thinking. Okay. Jack and Coke, I take it. No, it's actually just Coca-Cola, and it's not even sugar in this. So, if if I'm coming out as a bit, um, you know, speedy, um, that's uh, that's not the case. If, if on the other hand you think I'm acting, you know, down from drugs, I don't know. Do I look tired? Maybe I look tired. I don't know. Okay, so. Um, does Luke and you guys still hang out? Uh, no, I haven't seen him for years. Uh, it's not like there's a grudge or anything, it's just, you know, our paths don't cross anymore. Uh, he's not in the music uh, business, so, you know, the natural places to meet up like we do with perhaps, you know, uh, Big Zeno in Hawker Superstar, uh, who's been out of the band for, it's over 10 years now. Uh, but we see him, uh, you know, uh, now and then on on tours and on festivals, but with uh, with Luca no. Um, Boneyards, what kind of phone is that? What kind of phone do I use right now? It's a Samsung S, whatever something. I'm not sure. Um, nice face at this time in Sweden today, and hello from Atsuko. Okay, hello. I would actually. Uh, I, I thought no Swedes would actually be logged in today. There is this uh, mellow final today, I have heard. I think it's now. And it's, you know, it's a big thing. It's a music competition here in Sweden. So I thought every Swede would be uh, glued to the screen watching that. But I'm happy you joined us. We're actually up to 60 people watching now. So, okay, what are your musical idols? Or who are your musical idols? Good question. Um, that's a difficult one uh, because uh, that depends on if you mean just hard rock 
uh, and metal, or if you mean like generally. Uh, if we stick to just hard rock, I think uh, Iron Maiden is probably always up there, uh, number one. I tend to come back to them uh, all the time, and uh, I'm talking mainly about the Deano and Dickinson periods. I can listen to the Blaze Bailey stuff at occasions, but it's obviously, you know, a lot worse. Um, Kiss, number two. That's another one of my favorite bands. Um, the early Bon Jovi stuff, obviously not not the, the trash that they put out today, but uh, you know the the late '80s, early '90s album are just pure gold. Um, Alice Cooper, maybe, uh, probably, and. Just to tip it off, I will actually add a new band, or new, it's over 10 years now, but I would say that for the moment, I would say Ghost is also on my top five when it comes to hard rock. How would you describe the new album? Did you ramp anything up or cut back on anything? I would say actually for the first time, there is some continuity between this album and the last one. And this is the first time in our career because Every, every time we've done an album, we've always you know, lost members, uh, had to record it in other studios, had to record it with other producers or, or uh, you know, other people involved in some way. This time, we recorded the album in the exact same studio that we did with Rough Justice. Uh, I produced the album just as I did with Rough Justice. We used Chris Laney as a mixing guy, just as we did with Rough Justice. We actually used much of the same gear, uh, and much of the same sounds on keyboards and, and you know the same drums and stuff like that so I would say that sound wise it's a kind of you know perfection of Rough Justice that's the way I would put it I learned a lot when producing Rough Justice which was the first uh, you know solo production that I've, that I've done so um, and I think all those lessons learned went into making this album uh, so I think it's it's there's definitely a thread, kind of thread, from Rough Justice to this, to, to this Forever Wild album, uh, and I do think it's uh, just a little notch better on, in every aspect, and I do think the songs are better actually, as well. Not that I don't like Rough Justice, I think it's great, but uh, I think this one actually tops it even, so. Alright, you should do an Iron Maiden cover. Uh, we have done an Iron Maiden cover live once. We were crazy drunk playing in a place called Borderline in Pisa. Uh, and the reason why we were so drunk, because we're usually very professional, you know, professional guys. We were very professional uh, about uh, not drinking too much before a gig. But this gig was, uh, first of all, not really a packed venue, so to speak, uh, which was a bit off-putting. And uh, they gave us crazy amounts of beer and, and spirits backstage, and we had to perform at like two... Two in the, you know, what's it called? Two p.m. in English, right? Um, or or a.m. I, I don't know these. It's a stupid system. Uh, anyway, uh, so we had to play really late, and we had a lot of time to drink, and we did a spontaneous The Trooper cover, which uh, kind of ended with no one really knowing how the solo part went. Um, so it didn't work out very well. Um, not sure I would pull off a good Bruce Dickinson, to be honest. Um, but I do in enjoy, you know, singing to Iron Maiden, of course. I don't think it's maybe something that Crazy Licks would release officially, though. But All right, any plans for a UK tour? Uh, not at the moment. And as I said about the US tour, um, it's not likely to happen, uh, you know, this summer or fall because we're actually getting quite booked up with other stuff so <clears throat> maybe some off gig in the UK we'd be very open to do a festival in the UK definitely uh, and uh, to be honest the UK it's a bit difficult it doesn't pay very good so uh, it, it's quite hard to, to make it you know go around economically uh, it's way better to tour southern Europe and, and Germany and Scandinavia so, uh, you know, uh, for us to come to the UK, it has to be worth it, uh, either as a promotions you know, thing 
uh, on a festival or something, or it just you know it has to pay well enough. So that's been a problem. I don't know why it's it's like that in U in the UK, but uh, and then of course you know I get the feeling that people are waiting for Brexit to happen. No one really knows what will happen after that with bans coming from the EU if there will be a problem, you know, getting a work permit or something. So I think everyone is a little bit on hold until we know, you know, more. And hopefully we'll come to the UK on, on an off date, but there's nothing confirmed as of now. Please do a Def Leppard cover. You guys uh, could fucking nail it. Right, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm... You know, capable of doing a good Joel either, but um, definitely, I, I love the Flippard. Um, if you have a suggestion of a song, maybe we'll do it, you know? Danny, thank you for keeping the 80s hard rock sound alive. No problem, amigo. That's what I'm here for. Um, I, I couldn't imagine doing it any other way, honestly. Uh, it's not that I don't write music in other styles. But this is what I've always, you know, wanted to do uh, since I was a little kid. The first first songs I can remember that I really, you know, liked is like Final Countdown by Europe. It's it's Poison by Alice Cooper. It's uh, Taken on the World with, with Jewish Priest. Uh, you know, uh, Here I Go Again with, with Whitesnake. Those kind of songs that I remember from being like five, six, seven years old. So I, I'm, I usually say like this. I didn't have a choice, I didn't choose this, you know, it just, you know, Hard Rock chose me. That's a good lyric, actually. Anyway, uh, did Ada from New Religion Era co-write any song for this album? No, he didn't. And I asked him multiple times to join me, actually, but he's a busy guy. Uh, he's not in Inglorious anymore, as as you may know, but he, he's got a lot of things up his sleeve, so uh, uh, he didn't have time. I would, I would uh, enjoy you know, co-writing something with him, but uh, no, not on this album, not this time. Can't wait to listen to the new songs live in Italy at Metal Italia. It will be a huge show. The Crazy Lakes Hardcore Superstar got hard. Yes, it will. Uh, really looking forward to it. I love that venue. We've played there multiple times on the Frontiers Rock Festival, so really looking forward to coming back to, to Italy. Uh, we have a good following there, so... Hopefully it'll be cool, and we'll have uh, you know, new stage clothes, new songs, new props, new everything. We're we're throwing it all away, and just remaking it on this tour. So hopefully, all of you guys who have seen us on tour during the last year, you'll get a new experience uh, from this. Uh, Swedish question here. Dissa uh, också melon, which means uh, that I don't watch the mellow that I told you about earlier. No, I don't watch it, and I don't have any particular thing about it, you know, against it. I don't, uh, I don't enjoy much of the music, and I, I don't like the fact that they disguise it as a, you know, competition uh, on equal terms, which is, which is far from the truth. So. Uh, but, but I do realize that putting this live stuff up at this hour uh, was maybe not the smartest thing because many Swedes will be watching that. Okay, more vinyl coming, including the new album. This is another question that I knew would come up. And um, uh, I will answer it straight away. I know uh, some of you will be disappointed, but no, there will not be a vinyl uh, for this album. At least not at first. Uh, and the reasons for the for this is uh, there's actually multiple reasons. Uh, the biggest reason is that it takes a whole lot more money and a whole lot more time to get a vinyl record out compared to a CD, which in turn takes a whole lot more money and and money and uh, time compared to digital streaming, of course. Um, for us, it was very important to make this a pre-summer release. Because we know this album, I know I sound cocky, but we know this album will be the soundtrack to some of you guys' summers. So it was really important to get it out before the summer, and we uh, dealt a lot with Frontiers Records to make this happen. Now we have a release date on May 17th, which would not be possible if there was to be a vinyl on this. Uh, if you do want a vinyl, uh, I guess just flood Frontiers with requests. So they can't, uh, so they can't deny it, you know. 
but as of now, there is no vinyl plan for this um, or for Rough Justice. It's just the the three that we uh, released, the, the re-release albums, uh, New Religion, Riot Avenue, and the first one, uh, Loud Minority. Can I have any song instrumental with choirs from next album or from Rough Justice for a YouTube vocal cover? I can't replocate the 80s drums in my studio yet, so please. Um, I don't own them. Uh, they're, they're property of Frontiers, so it's not, it's not like I can just you know, upload them any way I want. Um, so I, I think that will be difficult if we don't release some kind of official karaoke version or something. Uh, that's not likely to happen. I understand why you would want that, but uh, um, there are there is software that that kind of you know removes vocals. Not that it does it very good, but I, I think that's your best shot probably. Any plans on coming in Russia in 2019? Uh, we don't have anything confirmed for Russia either. All the places you're, you guys are asking <laughs> actually aren't on our tour list, except for Italy, of course, that uh, we saw earlier. Okay, all I know, Danny, is that the new album will be in heavy rotation. These messages keep disappearing. I can't read the entire question. Okay, so I'll read the next one. Extra pro I rules, brother. Thank you very much. I agree. Um, Australia tour? Uh, again, no. No Australia tour planned. Uh, put another shrimp on the barbie and just, you know, pray to the gods that will come. As I, as I always say, you know, make your uh, local uh, venues know that you want us there. Uh, we don't have an agent for Australia, we've never been to Australia, we'd love to come, obviously. Uh, there's, you know, a ton of countries that we haven't been in that we would just love to come to, but... As of now, uh, I can say, uh, though, that some of those countries uh, which we haven't been in, uh, we will cover this year. I can't tell you which ones yet, but... Uh, at least two countries that we haven't been to at all, uh, we'll be going to this year. All right, very sad about the message disappeared. About the vinyl, I think it said, yes. Uh, as I said, uh, just, you know, write an email, send it to Frontiers, say you want the vinyl. If, if enough people want it, they'll, they'll put it out, you know. Uh, they're only doing business after all, so... You guys are incredible. Thanks for the great music, brother. Thank you. Hi there, this is Ed Carabantes from Hunter. Greetings from Chile. Greetings. Uh, have you shot any videos yet for the new CD? Okay, cool question. Yes, we have. Uh, the next single release, which will be out in less than a month. Um, so it will be out in March, I can tell you that much. There is a music video uh, for that, and it's in the cutting room at the moment. So we'll, we'll have a preview for ourselves in a couple of days, hopefully. And uh, I think it will be a really awesome video uh, that will make you uh, really long for the summer. Um, and um, it's made to one of my uh, favorite songs from the new album. I actually like pretty much every one of them, but um, a really cool song, um, and uh, so yeah, in a couple of weeks you will see the first video, and uh, we're planning on doing more, so there will be mo multiple videos before the album is released. Can't find any uh, vocal rock coaches in my city, should I try something like Ken Tamplin's DVD? I've only seen some Ken Tamplin stuff online. Uh, I mean, he's, he's talented, and, and I honestly couldn't give you any advice on this. I am self-taught. I took, like, a handful of singing lessons when I went to school uh, in what would be, uh, I guess, high school equivalent. Um, other than that, I've just, you know, sung my heart out and, and uh, learned that way. So I'm really not schooled at all. Uh, so I'm not sure if, if I can give you any tips on... on uh, Ken is not the way to rock, says Patrick. There you, there you go. Danny, what is your favorite band? Also, please come back to the USA. We saw you and then the message disappeared. Um, yes, uh, my favorite band, I, um, I mentioned before, um, I said top five hard rock bands. And I think, it, you know, it varies a bit 
it uh, it goes between I would say Iron Maiden and, and Kiss mostly. Uh, but I do have a thing for Ghost lately as well. They're definitely up on the top five, and they're hands down the best modern band uh, that there is. Uh, who are other guest musicians on the new CD besides Catalano? Okay, so you know that already. Yes, you are right. Uh, Rox Catalano from the band Catalano is doing backup vocals on the album. Uh, other guest musicians are actually only featured on backing vocals, which uh, that's the same thing that was on Rough Justice. Uh, we had a bunch of backing vocalists and uh, I would say uh, th there's there, I don't think there's a lot of people that you will uh, recognize instantly. Um, and I, I don't tend to, you know, use uh, famous people so that I can write their name on, you know, promo stuff. Um, I actually dislike that a bit to do that. So I use people based on their voices, which uh, is more important to me. Uh, but there's a couple of people. Uh, there is a very talented, uh, nice guy from Sweden called Michael Palace who sings on this one, and he did uh, vocals on Rough Justice as well. Uh, we've got a uh, guy called Dan Bentley as well from the UK. So there's there's you know there's a bunch of people from all over the world actually pitching into the back and vocals of this. Uh, kiss with or without makeup. Uh, I think they look cool with makeup. I think they look even cooler without makeup. But musically, it's it's unmasked Kiss, you know, hands down. My favorite albums are uh, Crazy Nights, Hot in the Shade, um, maybe Asylum. Um, so, so definitely Unmasked Kiss for me. I really think they capture the 80s uh, vibe uh, in, a, in a great way. Uh, and I, uh, I adore Desmond Child and everything he did back then. And, and the, the stuff that he writes for Kiss. Uh, at that time is just, you know, magical, uh, along with Paul Stanley stuff, so... Okay, FM, nice! Yes, FM, of course! A uh, really good band, we played with them last year, I think, yeah, it was last year in May on uh, the Melodic Rock Fest in Malmo. Uh, they're a great band still, and uh, they deliver live really, really well. Uh, are you doing a UK tour? I did answer this question earlier, we don't have a UK tour planned uh, right now. You guys rock, please check out On Looks No Hooks guitar cover on YouTube, Alexander Kolab. Okay, uh, I will do, will do. I have some time, I will definitely. Cheers. Who's an up and coming rock band we should all look out for and check out? Ooh, that's a difficult. Um, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, I had. Uh, I had a really good knowledge of the underground scene in Sweden uh, and some places abroad as well. If you asked me then, I would answer you, you know, without hesitation. Now I, I really don't know anymore. I, I do know some of the bands that are on, on Frontiers, you know, who have recently uh, released stuff. Um, we are having one of them as a uh, special guest on our release. Uh, release gig which is on May 17th in, in our hometown Malmo a band called Cry which I think is uh, a very nice band and, and talented professional musicians so uh, I guess you could check them out uh, I'm, I'm sure I have something I just can't you know from the top of my head uh, think of anything right now Desmond Child is the king of songwriting yes I agree uh, the problem with Desmond Child is that he was always into writing pop music um, now, luckily, pop happened to be, you know, 80s hair metal back then. So he wrote a bunch of really great stuff for Bon Jovi and Kiss, um, and other other people, you know, Cher uh, and stuff like that. And basically, uh, Aerosmith, all the stuff that he did back then is, is pure gold. But then he naturally moved on, you know, because pop stopped being rock and roll, and he started writing uh, other stuff. I think his most Successful stuff is actually Ricky Martin up to date. So, uh, but I will always remember him for the for the rock songs that he wrote. 
Is there a way to audition to be in one of your videos? Uh, depends, depends on what we do for, for the video. Uh, we, we've had some auditioning to... Uh, uh, actually, you can see it back there. The Wild Child video. We did audition some, some people for that. Uh, we did audition some people for the Hunter of the Heart video that we did for the last album as well. So it depends on, on the album. Uh, or sorry, it depends on the on the kind of video that we make. But uh, uh, if there is an open edition, we'll, we'll put it out on social media. And I guess you can audition like like anyone. You know? What's your top three '80s rock albums? Okay, uh, that is a difficult one. Uh, since I said Iron Maiden before, I would say that Summer in Time uh, is up there. Yes, that is my favorite Iron Maiden album. It might be strange. Uh, yeah. Actually, Seven Sun or Summer in Time, it's a close, close tie. But my all-time favorite song by Iron Maiden, which is actually a song that they've only played live once, and that I heard Steve Harris kind of hates, but I love it. It's The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, really good song. So, uh, let's say Summer in Time, and I'll put Crazy Nights uh, as number two, and I'll put New Jersey by Bon Jovi as number three. Those are near complete albums in my book. The new tracks sound thunderous. What's your process for laying down guitar tracks? Favorite amps, mics, mic placement? Might disappoint you here. We actually don't use any analog gear anymore. And I know that's not the real way to do it, that's not the 80s way to do it, but a production like ours, to make it sound like, like it does, would cost, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars back in the day. And that was motivated back then because, uh, you know, you could make that kind of money selling the album. Nowadays you can, so you have to uh, kind of cut costs wherever you can, cut corners. And uh, so we're actually sticking to uh, mostly digital gear. And I'm not talking about software on the computer. I don't like software emulation for guitars. But we use XFX, we use Kempers and stuff like that. So uh, most of the guitars that you hear are uh, those kinds of uh, you know, digital uh, guitar rigs, so to speak. Not strange, great fucking record, Summer in Time. I agree, it is, it is. It doesn't have the immediate, you know, crazy, sorry, not crazy things, the immediate Iron Maiden hit. I would say that uh, Wasted Years is probably uh, the, uh, the closest you'll get to, to, a, to a hit on that album. But I think there's a very even, uh, you know, level on the album overall, and and the last song, Alexander the Great, which is, you know, one of their really long, epic kind of strange songs. But it's actually one of the best ones that there is. You know, if you compare them to stuff from from Peace of Mind album or, uh, uh, you know, older stuff, uh, I don't think that uh, that there's there's a contest. Okay, uh, honestly, digital production is very good these days. It caught up well. I agree, I agree, and I think, um, you know, the reason why people ask what kind of amps we use and, and mic placement is because it actually starts to sound like that was what we did. Uh, and at some point, you know, these, these digital equipments, they, they actually emulate someone putting a, an analog stack with a, a, with a real microphone recording it, and, and then that kind of profile that they recorded uh, is what we use. So uh, at some point, it's it's not you know it's not made up by a computer. It's it's a recorded profile from a real amp, and then we uh, use that as if we had the amp ourselves. Uh, I like the organ sound in Wicked. Who's playing this organ? Uh, all the additional instruments uh, is uh, that's me. So uh, the percussion and uh, keyboards and stuff like that. Uh, also some of the some of the clean guitars, uh, like acoustic guitars and stuff like that. Uh, that's usually me playing, um, and oftentimes actually programming as well. I tend to program them so they they they're not you know perfect. I tend to to program some some errors into that, uh, but I actually only have this pathetic piece of gear for the keyboards. It works good though. I lay down some chords and I modify them in the program. But that's how it's made, so it's not, 
I hate to disappoint you again. I don't have a church organ standing here or some kind of vintage gear. Um, you can do a lot of stuff electronically today. Okay, in your opinion, better debut, Guns N' Roses or Skid Row? You know what? I uh, Some people will probably lynch me for this. I don't think that Appetite for Destruction is such a great album. I'll, I'll give you a second just to just to uh, take that in. Uh, I uh, You can hear Guns N' Roses in the background now, by the way. I much prefer Use Your Illusions, actually. Uh, not that Appetite for Destruction is bad uh, in, in any way, but it's not the you know, epic debut album that some people, I, uh, you know, try to make it out as. Uh, and as for Skid Row, I don't think their first album is their best either. I actually think that Slate to the Grind is, uh, you know, twice as good. So, uh, to answer your question, uh, I think I'd say Skid Row probably, but um, I don't think that's a, a, you know, tremendous album either. Big fan from Central USA. Glad you could join us. Coming to the US, uh, I answered this question earlier as well. We don't have any plans this year, uh, you know, due to difficulties with, with visas and, and uh, you know, economical factors, but we're trying our best. We really are. We have a lot of fans in the US and we want to play to you, too, so we'll just see what happens. Slates of the Grind all the way. I agree. Uh, that was actually the ballads from, from that album, what was. That was what, what got me hooked on Skid Row in the first place. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a very soft guy for those ballads. I remember having uh, the album called More, I think it was called More Power Ballads, which had uh, wasted time on it. Uh, and I really loved that song, so I checked out the, the rest of Skid Row. I was actually a bit disappointed at first because I thought it was too hard. You know? I was a kid back then. But then, I, then it grew on me and, and uh, that second album really, really good. Do you know what's up with Ed? Uh, I can't see the rest of the, that question. Something between... Okay, the, the, the questions are just popping in. Uh, what's up with Ed is that he lives in his hometown now and he's uh, not very involved in music anymore. Uh, there's, there was some confusion as to if he was actually okay or something, but I can assure you that there's no problem. Uh, he, he doesn't suffer from, you know, any any condition or, or anything like that uh, he's, he's just dead, you know uh, but no he's alive and well and uh, not in in the music business uh, but I talk to him occasionally over the phone or, or over the internet got to see you and meet you at melodic rock fest killed it I hear some YMT back there that is correct keep on running by YMT um, really nice band as well uh, any chance of a vinyl release of Rough Justice and the new album? Greetings from Edmonton, Canada. Okay, I guess you didn't hear uh, the start of this, uh, and I can I can repeat the answer I gave. Uh, unfortunately, no, there will not be a vinyl re release from this album, and uh, not at the time of the release on CD and digital, at least. And the reason for this is that we wanted to, uh, or one of the reasons is that we wanted to rush the release as much as we could. I wanted to release this album before the summer uh, and that wouldn't be possible uh, with a potential vinyl release. Uh, the demand for vinyl uh, printings is quite high. I heard somewhere that in Europe you have to wait like six months uh, to actually get the, the uh, vinyls you know, printed so the machines are just going going crazy. Everyone, everyone kind of got rid of their they're, you know, vinyl printers uh, in the in the late 90s. No one imagined that this would be a thing again. So, uh, not not many of them around. How is Patreon program going, and how much does it help you guys out? Um, the Patreon thing is is a bit hard because we honestly don't know what to do there. We're really uh, grateful for the people who are there and contributing to us, um, but the, the the Patreon platform is not. Not as good as it could have been. Uh, you know, you can't live stream through it. You can't upload videos to it. You always have to upload to a second party like Facebook or YouTube and then link it in. So it's a lot of hassle to get the stuff out and you always have to have like a backup. So what we can do is just put up stuff on YouTube, hide it from people on YouTube so they don't see it, make it private basically, and then post the link on Patreon. But uh, there's a lot of hassle there. But we, we are grateful for the people who are there. And um, 
I can say right now that uh, what we usually do for, for patrons is, uh, and I think the reason why, why uh, people stick around, because, you know, as I said, to be honest, we don't post very much there, unfortunately. If you have any ideas for us what to do, please let us know. But uh, what we are doing is that we're giving uh, patrons uh, um, the exclusive chance to have uh, every new album that we release, to get it for free, uh, you know, delivered to them and signed, which is the only way, unless you can, you know, bring an album or buy an album when we play live, um, and meet us all in one place, which is not always uh, the easiest thing. Uh, but that is the easiest way to get the album signed. So if you're interested in this, I would definitely suggest that you go out and check uh, our Patreon page. If you join our Patreon page for the $5 tier, um, you will be guaranteed to get the new album for free, delivered home to you, and signed by the entire band, which is the only way to get this done. Um, and if you're lucky, even a bit before release, actually, because we'll just ship them as soon as we have them. Uh, I can I can show you one right now because I haven't seen them. I don't know if they're even printed yet, but as soon as we have them, we'll start to uh, to sign them. And uh, uh, you know, the deadline for this is, of course, the official release date for the album. So if you join after that, uh, then you'll be eligible for the next release. But uh, to get this Forever Wild album signed, you have to join before. Okay, okay, fucking awesome. White Snake in the background, bad boys. Thank you. You, you seem to enjoy my, my taste in music, uh, which is nice. Um, I, I think you, you, you know now where I get all the stuff, uh, you know, the inspiration for the music. The rest of the question I asked you was about the glam sleaze scene now and like 10 years ago. How was or is it? Uh, I would say hands down that in Sweden there is no sleaze or glam scene. Uh, Swedes are quite... Um, we tend to change our minds quite fast. So if there's something that's you know in, which I would say that glam and sleaze was maybe from 2005 to 2010, 11, but it, but it disappears quite fast, you know. Uh, so one generation grows up, a couple of years later, the whole, the whole scene is gone. So there's very little of that left in Sweden, actually. Um, and the few bands that survived it oftentimes have changed in one way or, or another. I think we have gone towards a more melodic sound and not maybe as sleaze and, and uh, sleaze rock and as it was from the start. Uh, but it was a big movement in, in, you know, in the 2000s and uh, moving in. I think it actually peaked around 2010. Um, I think most of the bands that were influential in the, in the movement uh, either changed you know, their, their genre to not be involved in the sleaze movement anymore or you know, quit or uh, basically started doing subpar stuff. Um, hi, I'm Alex, the guitarist of Reckless Italy. Nice! Uh, I remember you guys, I wore your t-shirts uh, on the gig. My clothes were actually stuck in my suitcase on the airport. I couldn't get them in time. So uh, these nice guys from Reckless, they gave me a t-shirt so that I could rip it apart and use it live. And it's actually the t-shirt that I'm wearing on the... I think it's the t-shirt that I'm wearing in the uh, booklet for the live album as well. Okay, are you excited to play Vakken? Yes, yes, very. Uh, we actually don't know what to expect yet because uh, we we don't know even even know which stage we are supposed to play. And I'm not sure Vakken knows either. Uh, I think they'll decide, uh, you know, when they set all the other bands. The only thing that we know uh, right now is what day we'll play. But um, what stage and what time and, and all that, that comes uh, later. I love this song. The saxophone, I'm, as I said, I'm, I'm a soft guy, you know, underneath. Beautiful. Uh, one, one of my favorite, uh, you know, fellow Swedish bands. Uh, if you don't know who this is, it's, uh, it's Heat. And it's the second edition of Heat with Eric Grunwald on, uh, on vocals. Really good band as well. 
Uh, Richie Sambora is God. Um, okay. I'm not sure I uh, believe there is a God, but if there is one, I, I'm sure Richie Sambora is the guy. Uh, hello friend, you can play something. Uh, you mean if I can perform something? Uh, perhaps at another time I will do that as well. Right now, uh, this is just a question uh, question hour. Okay, how do you approach songwriting? Uh, I don't have a tactic, uh, really. It usually starts off with kind of a, uh, a hook of some kind, either a riff or a phrase, you know, a, 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 a lyrical hook that I uh, kind of, uh, you know, get, that gets stuck in my head and then I try to work around that. Um, I can sit down and force some writing and sometimes I'm forced to do that, especially when the, when the deadline is approaching. I had some, some of those sessions for this album where I just had to sit down and, you know, get some stuff on the table, get some demos to show the band. And that doesn't necessarily produce, you know, worst songs or better songs. Uh, but I would say that uh, you tend to throw away more stuff, so, so you, you kind of work a lot for a little gain. So it's, it's better if it comes organically over time, but sometimes you have to rush these things just to uh, you know, get the songs done. It's hard to live for the music in Sweden. Uh, I don't know, I, I mean the music scene in Sweden is very big. We have. I think after Finland we have the most bands per person in, in all of the world. Um, so there's naturally a lot of competition. People often ask me why so many bands from Sweden, uh, and this is, this is their words, not mine, I'm, I'm trying to be humble here, but why so many bands from Sweden uh, are, are so good. And I, I, I think it has to do with the competition actually. There's so many of us around, so at the time you get to hear, a band that releases an album or, or you know, manages to tour abroad, uh, that's actually, you know, they've left a trail of hundred bands behind them that, that didn't cut it. So uh, the, the competition is quite big, but if you reach above that, which often means that you have something to, to offer to the world, um, then I think that, that Sweden is actually a very good country to, uh, to be in. Not necessarily to play in, because uh, I, I think the audience in, in Sweden, they're used to being able to see a bunch of great bands, you know, probably every weekend. If you, if you live in a mid-sized town in Sweden, there's always something good playing live, uh, you know, mostly any weekend. So um, we tend to get more appreciation when we play in places that may, perhaps don't see that many bands. Um, but uh, I, for myself, I don't live 100% of music. I have a, a side job part time, and that's the, that actually is, is the same for for us all in the band. Um, so, so I guess from that uh, perspective, you, you could say that yeah, it is hard. But uh, I mean, that depends on what kind of living uh, style you want as well. I have my own house and and. Uh, uh, you know, I'm living quite comfortably, so uh, I guess I could live off of just the music, but uh, go down in living standard, but that's, that's just not something I want to do, you know. Where did you come up with the name Crazy Licks? Um, well, first of all, it was a long time ago. Um, I had, I got a guitar, a plastic toy guitar for... Um, for Christmas when I was, I don't know, six or seven or something like that. Uh, and this was, I, I love that guitar, I love that toy, it was a Japanese electric, you know, you push buttons and it played cool riffs. Uh, and that was the guitar I used when I did my first ever performance, when we, we uh, me and some guys, uh, I think it was in first grade, uh, we lip synced to Ride the Lightning by Metallica at this class fundraiser where we wanted to, to uh, raise some funds to make a class trip. Uh, and we got that brilliant idea, okay, let's do Ride the Lightning for all the parents. And um, so I used that guitar there and, and uh, I really loved it. At some point I lost that guitar and uh, when I thought back to it when I was a bit older, 
I thought that that guitar it had a name, and I thought, thought that would be a cool name and a cool story for the band. Uh, and in in some kind of uh, memory lapse, I thought it was called Crazy Licks. And it was not until many years after I named the band Crazy Licks that I actually found out it was called Hot Licks all the time. Uh, I actually think the name Crazy Licks is better than Hot Licks, so I'm not very uh, I'm not very you know sad that it turned out that way. I don't think particularly like that that Crazy Licks is a great name either, but. Uh, I think like this, you know, if a band is good, then the, it, it makes the band name good as well. I wouldn't say that Judas Priest is a very good name, until you know that the band is good, then it's a fucking brilliant name, or Iron Maiden or something like that. I mean, Iron Maiden could just be a, a mediocre power metal band, for all you know, but since it's a good band, it kind of makes the band name good as well. Uh, don't know, did you already answer to me? Had to answer phone. Can you guys come to Finland this year to Helsinki like with the cruel intentions? Uh, we are working on Finland. Uh, that is, I think, all I can say right now. But uh, it's definitely in the plans. We, it's, been, it's been quite a while since we were in Finland last time. and uh, so, so we're trying to get, uh, get Helsinki into our, uh, our touring plans as well. Are you looking forward to Headline Wildfest in Belgium for the second time? Uh, yes, very much. Uh, it, there's a, it's, it's a great festival and uh, this will actually only be the second time for us in Belgium. We had, we had plans on a gig uh, last year uh, which didn't work out, so uh, we're happy to, to be able to offer this to the fans instead, uh, playing Wildfest. So yeah, that'll be uh, really good, and that's the uh, actually apart from our release show on uh, on the release day of the album on May 17th in our hometown, Wildfest will actually kick off the real tour, so to speak. Um, so uh, that'll be the first time that we try some of the new stuff for the tour. Any chance you guys ever playing Download Festival? Very few of the Scandinavian modern rock bands. The question disappeared. Okay, uh, Download Festival. Uh, yes, of course. Um, I think. Um, you know, uh, it's a bit out of our league, uh, unless we play the, the smaller stages. Uh, you know, when we release an album like this, we try basically every festival that doesn't, uh, you know, that doesn't interfere with some of our plans that we already have. So um, we we've checked every avenue, and and uh, we we take what we get. You know, we would love to play down with festival, but there's. Uh, there's not any plans for that right now. Uh, if you were going to go on a road trip, what five albums would you bring to crank in the car? Uh, and there is Ed, so can I get a free copy? Have you joined Patreon, Ed? Have you? If you join Patreon, you can. Uh, I actually have a vinyl for you as well. You, you never picked up your, your Riot Avenue vinyl, I believe. Uh, it's, it's right here waiting, so uh, come on over. I will, I will buy you a beer, or give you a beer, or have a beer, uh, and uh, you can get your, you can get your Riot Avenue vinyl, um, and and you can get a free album as well. That depends on when you come. Right now, I don't have it. So. Def Leppard's best song uh, from the top of my head. I don't know. Uh, that was difficult, actually. Hysteria, maybe. Uh, Rock of Ages, pour some sugar on it. Pour some sugar. That's a good one. And they've got a lot of stuff. I would say Pyromania and Hysteria albums generally uh, would be the best. Okay, we're closing in on an hour now. We got seven minutes to spare. I want to thank everyone for joining in. I hope I answered your questions. Uh, I, I I saw a lot of stuff going by. And it's, uh, it's honestly difficult to see everything, it goes by quite fast, but I try to answer it all. If you like this kind of format, if you want me or, or us doing more stuff like this, um, then please let us know in the comments, uh, and we will uh, we'll do some more live stuff. I think it's quite a good, good way, I mean, I'm not used to this. Uh, interview situation usually there's another voice on the other side and, and not like you know 
hundreds of questions coming up in the same time, but um, I think it works out good. It's a, it's a it's a cool way of uh, connecting more directly with the fans, and and honestly, you ask you know more interesting questions than an interviewer sometimes does because those are just like the basic questions. This is a very good song, by the way, uh, from the album uh, "Stick It in Your Ear" by Paul Lane. If you haven't heard this, fucking rocks. We got five minutes to spare. I can try to round it off with a cool song, but we got five minutes to spare. So, do you have any more questions? I could answer something more. Um, what's your favorite brand of guitar amp? Um, I have a rack mounted Kemper right here, and that's the only thing I use. I do all my demos on that. We actually recorded a lot of guitars for the album on that as well. So, hands down for me, it's Kemper. Yeah, I think it sounds great. Especially when Chris Laney gets his hands on, on the, the tracks afterwards. He does a f tremendous job mixing all, it all, so... Uh, has there ever been consideration in the past to come to Canada? Yes, we've been in talks with Canada as well this year. And uh, just, to, just to say, uh, Canada and the US is, uh, believe it or not, it's not the same country. Um, but it, there's a big difference uh, when it comes to visas and work permits, actually. So you're allowed in Canada to play uh, a few gigs, as long as it is not a big organized tour, you're allowed to play without a, an official work permit, which actually makes it a whole lot easier for us to come there. So we're, right now we're, we're actually looking at uh, the opportunity to, uh, of coming to Canada. We've checked some festivals. Most of them are booked for this year, but... Um, but yes, Canada is in the plans, and we, we noticed that, especially after the last album, I think that was helped by the Friday the 13th game. Uh, we've, we've actually gained some fans in, in Canada as well, so... Uh, uh, hold your thumbs and, and we hope you will come there. Okay, if you could tour with any band that's actively playing today, which one would it be? Uh, ooh, this one is hard, because should I pick something that I really like, or something that we actually fit with? Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't mind being the supporting act on KISS, on their farewell tour, on their farewell tour. Um, but uh, I think we would fit as well, you know, musically, so I guess that I could answer Bon Jovi, but, but nowadays I don't know if it's, I don't even know if the audience would be, you know, the right one. Um, Ghost would be great, but I don't know if it's a good fit musically, so... Uh, Ah, it's a bit difficult. There are uh, Iron Maiden, maybe you know. Favorite Dokken album? Not a big Dokken fan, honestly. Uh, we've uh, we've been compared to Dokken, especially on the Rough Justice album, quite a few times in reviews. But I just know the off song. I, I couldn't even name a Dokken album, uh, to be honest. You'd outshine Kiss. Well, we wouldn't be playback, at least you know. Uh, all right, what is your favorite Crazy Lakes record? Um, the new one. Forever Wild is my favorite Crazy Lakes record. Uh, the Struts, what about them? I haven't heard them. Uh, I know, I know what there is about them. I haven't heard them, sorry. Favorite Bon Jovi album, I told uh, this a bit earlier, it's uh, New Jersey from 1988, I think great album. Favorite Steel Panther song, not a big Steel Panther uh, fan. I remember from the top of my head uh, Community Property. I guess that's, that's okay. Monsters Rock Cruise 2020. Yes, please. Make it happen, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, Skid Row. Yes, we played some Skid Row earlier as well. 
Best Def Leppard album. I've been into this as well. Pyromania and Adrenaline. Uh, no, sorry, Pyromania and Hyster Hysteria, right? Uh, Adrenalize is okay as well. I think you'd play great with Hailstorm. Okay. Uh, not sure we'd fit the audience, but uh, this is a good song. This is a good song to end this with. Okay, so we've, we're clocking in on one hour. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining this. I really enjoyed this, and uh, see you next time. If you want there to be a next time. If you do, please let us know, you know. Until then, cheers, and here's some Quiet Riot for you. <laughs>